you want to save money on your trading card purchases, we have a promo link uh, over at 50cards.shop. Enter the promo code at night to get 5% off your order. Hey everybody, welcome to Nexus and Night, your weekly Vanguard podcast. I'm Atlas. I'm Matt. I'm Root Beer. And the last week of BRO 2022 has concluded for the Vanguard parts. <laughs> Go listen True. to a, we- a Weiss podcast if you want to hear about what happens next week. Uh, but uh, yeah, standard, standard format. And Root Beer and I played in it. And I did really bad, and Rupier did not really bad. No, <laughs> I was nice. undefeated. Yeah, exactly. Went undefeated, so. <laughs> yep. With a record of um, zero zero. Yep. I had stuff uh, going on that day anyway, so I wouldn't be able to play very long. I think I had the tournament started at what one or something, or twelve thirty one somewhere in there. Yeah, I was like, t- but I had stuff to do at like four thirty, so I needed to be out of here by three thirty. So like. Yeah, check-in was, I think, 8.30 Pacific, so it would have been about 11.30, and then they wait an hour, and then start, like, just half an hour is good. I don't think you need to... Yeah, you know how it is. But yeah, I would, I would only been play. I would have only been able to play a few rounds anyway. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, first of all, I thought check-in was an hour later, because it was last time. Yeah, that's true. And then they moved it for some reason? I'm guessing because they wanted it to like end in less time, right? Like just start it earlier so you can finish earlier. So yeah. I get back from so I get back from the store and I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, right. that was then? Fuck. Yeah. I'm, well, no, I just thought it started. I thought it was like, oh, I just need to be back before one. And, you know, apparently yeah. I need to be back before noon, but it's not a huge deal. What are you going to do? Um, so we'll talk about our experiences at the end because they're way more interesting than they were for V. <laughs> Mostly because... Yeah, because we happened. existed in this format. Yeah. Um, but also, uh, let's take a look at the tops. So in our top eight for Asia Oceana... <laughs> yeah, Gravidia's still really good. Who would have yeah. guessed? Yeah, who would have guessed? <clears throat> so... Gravidia's whole, like, being able to give your whole front row a ton of power. You draw a bunch of cards from the Meteors. Also, your over-trigger can just straight end the game randomly. Yeah. Yep. Also, like, four of the ten rear guards you play just gain crits. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's called foreshadowing. And uh, it's nice to see that Zorga finally got a top, because I know it makes... No, I hate it. Yeah, that's the funny. I don't thing. want to give Zorga players any <laughs> any additional copium. They're that's the so point. obnoxious. I mean, so we said that like something is like, is it something's good or something's like over? I mean, I mean we mentioned last. The... Well, I mean, I don't think any that can standard is like too far apart of like, you Mm -hmm. know, checking a trick, checking triggers really well apart from beating other people. So I assume this would happen. Right. I mean, unless you're Eugene or Hexa Orb. I mean, I think, I think Eugene probably is not likely, but I think Hexa Orb might, might might randomly, could randomly kill somebody. (laughs) I think the same thing works for Zorga. Just got left behind, man. I, I mean, Zorga the, has like crit pressure every turn with the prisoner dragon, I mean, and like triple drive. You could, I guess, just, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, but you're not like getting advantage with the triple drive, right? Hmm. You'd just be playing Gravidia, to be honest. <laughs> it's like the same thing, but better. Actually, it's just better in every way. I think. Yeah, I guess it is. It happens. Yeah. And then the final standings for AO were Kyrie first place, Nirvana second place, sure. uh, Which, how Nvidia third, and Bruce fourth. That's I mean, crazy. Uh, Nirvana is one of those decks that, like, you look at it on paper and it seems to have everything. Because like Arx draws too early, you have Expecta for crit pressure, you have Esperida for a restand on grade four. I think lists were playing. 
uh, Erger. I don't know if this one did. I don't want to look it up right now, but uh, I know some lists played Erger, so you could potentially do that at grade three if you wanted to. And then uh, Nirvana also burns you. It's honestly kind of amazing that with all of that, Nirvana turns out to only be just okay. Is it because like it just straight dies to prison? And like, yeah, I mean that's, that's a I think really that's part rough of part of it, right? Because like. Yeah. With the hits to Magnolia, Prison's probably a lot more likely to mm -hmm. be at this event. So playing Nirvana is a little bit more dangerous. Yeah. but Also, think... like, general removal is still pretty bad, even though you have the grade one to recycle something with overdress. And, you know, you can call back your trick stars, but that means you still have to find a second one for your front row. So even just, like, regular retire can still be rough. Looking at you, Gravidia. Shout out to Franz for getting top four with Gravidia. Yeah. Yeah. And then Franz Bastion there. just kind of exists in top four. I think he topped in every format. And topped high, too. Wait, Bastion or Bruce? Uh, Bruce, sorry. Yeah. yeah. And there's Bastion there's always like, I think there's like one eight. Bruce in every top eight, right? Yep. I think so, yeah. <laughs> Not only was it in every top eight, I think it was in every top four. Uh, I believe it. Well, we'll find out shortly, but also, do you think, like, I, I, I wasn't really looking at, like, people's names. What if it's the same guy? I don't, I, mean, I don't think it is, but yeah, like, Could Bruce be. is just one of those decks that, like, just keeps topping. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of Kyrie too. That'll be a kind of recurring, mm -hmm. uh, exception, Bruce, one of them. Bruce never was bad. Like, it's only gotten better stuff, but I guess we just got bored of it. Like, what happened exactly? <laughs> Mm. I, mean, I don't think its standing has changed all that much. No, it's like other deck, good. yeah, it's still good. Like other decks have caught up, but like going by like representation and top cuts, like Bruce is still as strong as it has been. Just being able to consistently show up in every region. We just I, I remember like for those first like three or four sets, we were complaining. Mm. Bruce, they keep giving Bruce broken yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was before Great Force. Yeah. Honestly even, by, honestly, even by set three, like, Gravidia came out, and Gravidia has been good since release. Mm -hmm. so, like, it was honestly just set two, where Bruce and Bastion were so far ahead of everything else. Yeah. Like, once we got to set three and other decks started catching up, I think it was just fine. What are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, Bruce does its thing. Yep. So, next for EU, so... All right. This is interesting because there were originally like two Thagrias in the top eight, and then sure. one of them couldn't make it to the second day, so they subbed out for a Greedon player. Incredible. This is interesting. <laughs> so they get yeah. the ninth place Greedon player. Mm hmm. So yeah, we have two Prison, two Bavsagras, one Thagria, one Greedon, Bruce again, and Flagberg. What? <laughs> this top eight is bizarre. This is. <laughs> I mean, Flagberg, I kind of get it. Like, you have Inlet Pulse, which is just a good card. Flagberg retires too, which is kind of relevant. And sometimes the triple door is just too much for you to deal with. That's so. true. It can't just end your life. Yeah. So, I like, think half I... this top eight is so bizarre. It is. <laughs> um, it absolutely for... is, though. The green on, I understand, like, you got bubbled out and then, like, Got, got its golden ticket in, so I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna discount that as like yeah. what, but the rest. Of it, yeah, but just, also just say the top. Just say the top four. <laughs> but also the greed. The ninth place greed on player got first. That's incredible. <laughs> you know what? He did it. Or yeah, they did and it. Then Good job. Bruce got second place. Third place was Kyrie or not uh, Seraph, and then fourth place was Flagberg. Well. What a bizarre top eight. That is, that is, for the entire European yeah. continent, just wow. Incredible. Absolutely so yes, incredible. The champion of EU is Greedon. Well, and and because he found the you know the the five dollars in the gutter and to buy a Wonka bar and that happened to have the golden ticket in it. And uh Incredible. Like, I got a golden yeah. ticket. Yeah. yeah no, right. like, good for them. They did it. Meanwhile, yeah. in normal land. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have three Gravidias, two Kyries, Bruce still, Bastion, and a random Tamayura. Sure. Tamayura's interesting. Uh, the, last, 
the last couple slices are definitely a little like, hmm. Bastion is like one that you could be like, all right. Yeah. But like, I think Tamiura is like one of the better decks in that set. I think yeah. like what Sigria PBO and Tamiura are like the three that were in that set. Yeah. Were yeah, they on that set? Tommy yeah, I think those are the three that were too. like playable. Yeah. But uh, I don't know how good PBO is, but I, I was going to build it and then I couldn't find the mains. So, you know, understandable. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, that card is uh, really sells well. Gravidia, Gravidia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gravidia, Gravidia, Bruce Kyrie. Makes sense. <laughs> Which, but, yeah. that's the most normal top four we could have. <laughs> yeah, that's Gravidia, the huge showing. So mm -hmm. if you're think if you're looking at your um your uh what is it local the uh, regional events coming up Gravidia should be on your mind mm -hmm. uh, yeah lots of Gravidia Bruce of course Bastion or not mm -hmm. Bastion uh, Kyrie is still good and I don't yeah, think we're it? getting the next set until what September I think uh, so let me see no we're not getting the next set till like November I think oh really okay. I think Japan gets it in September. We get yeah. it. Oh, I'm That's sorry. I yeah, because we're getting set six in October, which means Lyrical is probably set or yeah, Lyrical is November, and then set six is October. And then our unfortunate asses in California have to deal with set seven coming out the weekend of. That's unfortunate. Better uh, get your stuff uh, during that sneak peek. Um, yeah, yeah, so the BRO metagame is going to be fairly similar to most people's regionals. Mm -hmm. So, and that goes for uh, every format. It, well, no, that goes only for standard, actually, because we're yeah. going to have clan selection to fix, to yep. change V and premium. premium for the worst, maybe. But I don't yeah, know, yeah. Clan, clan selection comes out this Friday. Uh, yeah. Yes, it does. The week this drops. I need to buy Tachi cards. Me too, good sir. <laughs> oh, I, and spike cards. Those are important. Those are more important yeah. than the Tachi cards, actually. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to need... Like, I want to play Chimera. Vowing Reverse, and then I also want like Ripple stuff for V, and new Jewel Knights, new OTT cards. Fair enough. Yeah, Richard's all happy about the new Jewel Knight stuff. Yeah, yeah. Gravidius Nuts. Who'd have guessed? Yeah. Dex just does it all, really. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, let me see what the schedule... I, I well, think, yeah. uh, but Kyrie is still the most fun of these. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think for a for NA, everything like Texas is happening in like a week. Uh, Georgia is happening in September, so nothing changes. Illinois, nothing changes. Ontario is right before the set comes out, nothing changes. And then uh, Vancouver is when they finally get set six, and I think it's before Lyrical. So yeah, us in California, we're the only ones that are going to have to deal with like a significantly changed meta, maybe. Yeah, the there's some of the lyrical, new lyrical ride lines look quite good. Yeah, um, I mean, one of them is just Spike Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> so, you we, know. Last year in California, we were at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And um, we had this awkward uh, just time of you... you you're you're watching it develop in front of your eyes, and then you have to sit there like a ghost and just let watch the meta develop in front of you. Now we're on the tail end of it, and we can see the stuff, the things yeah. leading up to it. Although, in fairness, I don't know that set six changes a whole lot because none of the existing ride lines are getting supported. That's true. Yeah, like What's it's all new. Six again? Uh, so new Nirvana. Oh, that's all the yeah. That's all the prayer dragon. And yeah, whatever. all the prayer dragon youth. Who you in the red jacket? We reviewed it a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm. So, yeah, I, ha I have to re remember which brain I'm using. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, it's like, we have like a couple cards for like greed on and like Orphist, which are like, eh. and then a bunch of like new ride lines. But I don't know that any of them do enough to like change the current meta. Like Youthberg. And Leonorn both seem fine. And I think the new Nirvana has this, all of the exact same problems as the current Nirvana. Very nice. Maybe <laughs> more of them. Yeah. Oh, like the uh, oh, it's new and crossover dress. Let's give it a try. Yeah. 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 Um. I guess it has beers, so that one's like at least has resist. Okay. 
so yeah, those are like the top, all of the top decks. And I will now stop sharing. So let's get into our personal records for BRO Atlas. So I, you so, start? I assume, so I assume you both played top of the line decks. <laughs> I played Magnolia. Um, <laughs> Wait, you want to share your list? Which which uh, which which would you do play the Grade Four Magnolia, right? No. Would you like to share your list with the class Atlas? Oh, do I really have to? Sure. I, I I know I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, Look, this is self reflection, Alice. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, while I'm finding this thing, I guess I'll just get into it. So, uh, I played a version of Magnolia where I went back to the Persona Ride model so that I could play things like Wild Intelligence and Inlet Pulse Dragon along with Magnolia. I could see that smirk wipe it the fuck off your face. Uh, <laughs> this turned out to be my downfall, however, because I will now talk about uh, my, my, my record here. So, round one, uh, I was up against Gravidia. Now, uh, Ripbeer, I believe you played this guy during V. Uh, Am I Will? Uh, maybe. That's not that really guy. remember all of their... Yeah. Because he, he recognized my voice, and he's like, I think I played Rootbeer during V. Yeah, so I, I did play I, against a Narukami player, like, first round. Yeah, he did say he was playing Narukami during that. Um, I, I played... Oh, well, that was in premium. I don't think I played Narukami but, in V. Oh, it might have been premium then. Um, yeah, but I remember, like, the first guy I played against was Narukami, and we had, like, a decent chat afterwards. Yeah, so it might have been him. So, shout out fro to him. Shout out to Am I Will, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I should just pull up a plug for his list because I saved all their deck codes and I forgot to write mine down on paper. I gotta go. All right, so this is the the list he was using, uh, Gravidia. Um, all right, sure is a Gravidia list. Yeah, so a pretty standard Gravidia list here. Um, he's Does he got have the... three different printings of the front trigger? He, yes. <laughs> yeah, I respect like that. Yeah, three different frames of the front trigger. He's got seven meteors, four of the pink meteor, the one that binds itself. Um, Honestly, and then, I, I did not expect that, because like the Gravidia list I had, I was only playing two when that first came out, but I'm mm -hmm. looking at all the lists, and they're all on like 11 orders. So, I okay. thought like Hellhazard was just going to be like two, three. I, I didn't think they everyone would just max out on it. I... I'm not entirely sure. Like I, I knew Gravidia was going to be a thing. Yeah. Um, I like it's always the scary thing at locals. So I lost to Over Trigger on turn eight total of the game. Their turn four. Uh, I had two perfect guards, and I was ready for his Persona Ride turn where he had the Gravidia and then this dude, uh, <laughs> the one that uh, just gains a crit, Baka Brito who gets a crit, uh, Cobra looking guy. So I was like, I got two of these. I'm good. Um, and it was on their Persona Ride turn. They put five meteors into drop. So that's the, like, triggers activate twice, 10 can of crit to every, like, all the stuff. So he gets the over trigger after getting a crit on his first drive check. So everything has eight criticals. <laughs> Still game. So I had two. I had two. So I was like, all right, I can take the, the Vanguard that has a crit and the rear guard that has a crit, and it turns out it just didn't matter. Um, <laughs> and going from four damage from four with three heals and drop is just a nope. So yeah, that's a yeah. That that's an L for me. And he was like, uh, dude, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to win like that. I'm like, nobody wants to win like that. And it's not, it's kind of yeah. not your fault, but it's getting hit for like 30 something. Eight I think, crits. I think you shouldn't have let your opponent hit the over trigger. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Very much appreciate That's what Also, I, I found your deck list atlas, or at oh, least good. like one of the versions you shared with me. That's fine. Just uh, give it to me, I guess. There. Give him the code. Yeah. Anybody have any launch codes? As far as that American Dad episode the other day. Um, I don't know if you kept that name, but I mean, he could have just said nine K three D, and he could have typed it in. I, 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 I changed the name. It was nine K three 
3D. It was um, I, I changed it to Who's Right Is It Anyway because I've been watching <laughs> a lot watching a lot of Who's Line. Um, skip that. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> this this was my deck list. Now I was once again using the um, Rancor Chain Black Tears Hush Dragon early game just to get that like drop on the opponent. Um, in terms of orders, yeah, still for um, for Wild Intelligence to Ghost Chase. The Ghost Chase did come in handy. Um, this elephant became uh, a second copy of Glow Nipples uh, because I realized I got the soul by other means. So mm -hmm. it, that's literally the only thing that changed about this list. All right. Between when I sent it to Rupert and now. Uh, the thing I learned from all these games is that uh, I was a little overzealous in like trying to get resources for myself, and deck out became a problem. Um, where I was like, oh, you can draw a lot of cards with Inlet Pulse. I can make a board with Wild Intelligence. Turns out, like, just kill them. <laughs> <laughs> like, killing them is more important. Uh, I'm, I just have that great nature brain, you know what I mean? We're like, well, I gotta attack with everything, and then they all gotta die, and I gotta draw cards. Otherwise, it's not a deck, right? <laughs> so, um, I think what I would do uh, if I could do it all over again is like put Inlet to two. I think that's fine. Elephant already was gone. I think um, maybe you run like more end bars because it allows you to be aggressive and then recoup your board in that way. See, it's still fucking in there. And <laughs> um, maybe a third end picks and a third glow nipples, but the rest of it was for the most part fine. I honestly think I might run more crits or fronts instead of draws if I do keep the inlet pulse thing, which I will explain <laughs> right now. So, round two. I was up against Tamiura. MQA3. So, up against Tamiura, I lost to deck out. Wish we got promos. Well done with the name. Um, so, pretty, you know, normal looking Tamiura deck. He's yeah. got, yeah. You know, Pretty straightforward. So a combination of, uh, this is what I wrote verbatim, a combination of bad deck building on my end, in parentheses, four inlet pulses uh, being rendered useless, plus had to use three to four wild intelligences because there was a part in the game where I just had a handful of triggers, including the wild intelligence. So I had to use that to make a board. So the ideal is to use like one or two at the most in a game. I had to use three. So that's mm -hmm. nine cards out of the deck. Um and it just, I just died to deck out. So that sucks. Uh, I was like, all right, I'm done with this. I'm going to play one more, at least just for the story, and then <laughs> uh, get on with my life. Um, so lastly, I went up against Prison. And Prison, I was honestly kind of excited because my deck has a lot of unplay abilities. And I was like, oh, cool. He can take my, like, Diamond Aru, and then I can call it back and then use the still again. Um, so, once again, looking at this, you'll notice that this girl, the one that uh, you, it makes your opponent uh, prison something from hand and then draw one. It is often used as a budget version of this girl, uh, Makrit, the promo that, buy, that prisons from top of deck. It turns out he was using this to mill my ass because this is the first time in my life that the overtrigger has been a bad thing outside of the first damage of the game. He used three Makrit and all four of the gr uh, green hair girl. So that's seven cards out of the deck. I had to use wild intelligence once. Uh, and I I knew like don't use it. You like you know, you can make more of a board. Like the Tommy Ur game was still on my mind, um, and he on on the last turn of the game, I had three cards left in deck. He hits me with the damage. It's the over trigger, so I go from three. I have to draw again. That's two, and then he just ends his turn right there, and the game's over. <laughs> so. It do be like that. It yep. do be like that. I thought it was funny because he didn't even ride pure light for most of the game. He was just <laughs> on Seraph. By the end of the game, he had, I think, four cards left in deck because he was triple driving the whole time. Um, 
So Dang. I thought it was it was an interesting way to kill someone because he he soul charged the OT off of the prison turn one. Mm -hmm. So I got so that was a load off my shoulders, and then it just turns out no, he was Machiavellian my ass by uh, milling me out. So that's unfortunate. Yep. Yeah, that well is done, tragic. Man. No, I, I I gotta give that guy credit because mm -hmm. it's uh, well done. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I learned a thing, and that is don't be so concerned with resources, especially in standard. <laughs> That's not saying yeah, don't be concerned with resources, just not as much. Like, relax. <laughs> so that was me. Uh, I suck, <laughs> and yeah, uh, I went to yep. locals. Had a pretty good. Uh, uh, you know, locals with V, but that doesn't mean anything. So, yeah, but Your that's turn. like, yeah, but V is like changing in a week anyway. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I played all eight rounds. I went six and two. And I, so yeah, uh, I think after everything was tallied up, they put me in 20th place. Let me go nice. share my screen. And then this wonderful drawing, if you haven't already seen it on Twitter, yeah. where he, he drew himself as Buff Sagra. I didn't draw myself as Buff Sagra. I drew Buff Sagra. Oh. I thought it was just like the, the character that you use for yourself as Buff Sagra. But no, that's just Buff Sagra. Oh. Well, still looks good. Anyway. anyway let's take yeah. a look here. But yeah, there's me. I'm 20th. Nice. Plasma Go fish, there. baby! Yeah. Yeah. So I was playing uh, Buff Sagra. Mm -hmm. and so nice name. <laughs> yes, it is. Go back, go back up again. What was it? Oh, nice. Huffing oh, yeah. that good cope. <laughs> yep. It's all the SPs you have there. Yes, it is. Because I made a stupid bet on Twitter back when Trick Moon was first revealed. I said, like, if they ever make, like, an evil version of Trick Star, I was going to, like, SP out the deck. And then I did it. Well, because you did Copy Star, and then now we have a mascot because of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I did it. And then I was like, all right, well, I have to play it. So when I was first doing test games, just like gold fishing by myself, the deck was performing terribly. And I was like, oh, this is not going to go well. And then I started playing against you guys afterwards, and it went a little bit better. So I was this close to just playing Kyrie instead. I actually have like a registered deck list. I hope you appreciate all of these deck names I've been coming up with. Beer battered fish sticks, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so I did come up with a Kyrie list too, but this ultimately, <laughs> oh, you're right, my trigger lineup, <laughs> just everything about it. <laughs> yeah, the LSR ride line, the four different playing, PGs, like, <laughs> a bunch of different triggers, and playing a bunch of like friend support. But yeah, so I went with Bob Sagra instead, and my list for Bob Sagra is also, I think, kind of different from how other people are playing it. Uh, I opted to drop the sword entirely because over the course of our test games, I like never really drew it, and the times I did, it was mostly dead. What does like, the sword I... do again? Uh, so you soul blast one to arm it instead of counter blasting, and then you get 10k when you're attacking, and at the end of that battle, if your opponent's four or less, you can counter blast two, retire the sword, and deal them a damage. Okay. So that's just too many resources to commit. Like, you want to be soul blasting every turn, so spending a soul to arm yourself is, like, not great. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I understand the argument for, like, keeping the sword around for, like, the burn damage. It is a three attack deck, so sometimes you need that extra pressure. And also, in situations where you draw the, sh where you, uh, draw the shield in your opening hand, because your ride line searches for either the sword or the shield. If you open one of them, you can search the other, and you're guaranteed two arms in your hand. But, you know, I was weighing the pros and cons of it, and I'm like, well, if I draw the spear, I'm almost never going to use the sword, because I don't think paying for the Counter Blast 2 is very good, so I decided I was just going to drop it. And since I was dropping it, I was also dropping a Darla, the grade 3 that arms something from the drop zone, because... I figure, like, the main use case for that was being able to get sword and shield on turn three, so I kind of opted to cut that, too, and uh, I forgot to order Burning Flail, the crit that, at the end of the battle, it boosted Goes to Soul, gives something 2k, so I had to play four copies of Travis. Tragic. Yeah. I thought I had ordered it, like, I thought 
I put it in my TCG player cart, and then I looked back, and it just wasn't there, and instead I had, like, eight of the G Narukami trigger that, like, goes into soul, gives your Vanguard 10k. Uh, Tragic. That's rough. <laughs> so, yeah. That was a thing. So, I decided... So, yeah, for the rest of the deck, I have four of Alshnia. So, this one just, like, gets 10k. It's a big bungus. And then also calls grade one from drop. One of the nice things about this deck is that because I'm playing both uh, Samsara and Fushimachi Madoka, both of these cards... Uh, Madoka can be a 15k shield, so it's very big. And then with Alshnia, I could, like, call... Guard with Madoka, and then the next turn call it back. Uh, same thing, same deal with Samsara. It's something I can just kind of throw down early. It also has intercepts, so you can like throw it down early, maybe guard with it, and then either Bavsagra Soul Charge skill or Ashnia can bring it back. That's pretty dope. Mm -hmm. So, in practice, I feel like I did not use Madoka's plus fifteen or plus ten k shield all that much. Like, I ended up just calling it early because it was, like, a pretty disposable card. If it's stuck around, then it's just a 10k booster, whatever. And if they, like, attack it, I don't care that much. I have ways to bring it back. So I feel like if I were to revise the deck list, I might bump up the copies of Samsara just because it's a 13k boost instead of 10, and that's sometimes relevant. Uh, four Trick Moon, of course. Everyone just plays Four Trick Moon. Uh, again, four them. copies of... Uh, Travis, because I desperately want to be soul charging every turn. Yeah. So it's like and, if you yeah. killed something, you get a soul charge, kill something plus 10, right? Yes. So yeah, if I were to revise the deck list afterwards, I'd probably do something that looked more like this. And yes, I had to put Adarla back into the deck. Uh, we'll go over that when we get to my stream game. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching it live. I was rooting for you. Yeah, so uh, my first round was against Prison, so pretty standard Prison list. Mm -hmm. uh, neither of us really got to do what the deck wanted to do, so I didn't draw Spear in that game either. And then my opponent never went up to Pure Light, they just never found it. So That's always fun. Yeah, so like both neither of us were really doing anything, but because he had the triple drive and he could still imprison my stuff... Like, he was grinding out the game better than I could because I couldn't retire any of his things without the spear. So that was just one of those, like, all right, well, in a simplified game state where both of us have completely bricked, his deck is slightly higher than mine. So I lost that one. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, round two was against the Gria. This was the opposite of the first game where my opponent bricked and I had most of what I needed. So my deck was just going off doing its thing. I have big numbers with Travis. I was soul blasting every turn for Bob Sagra. You know, you have the crit. And my opponent just managed to miss every Thagria search they tried to do. Oh nice. my god, that's awful. <laughs> yeah, because I think... Was this? Yeah, so like they ride the grade one. They look at their top... Uh, what was it? Uh, they just, yeah, they just like look at the top card, put it back. And then they ride to grade two. And then they look at the top five. And then they put it back. <laughs> and then, like, the same thing happened on grade three. I'm just like, dang, this guy is not doing anything right now. So, do you all remember using the great, the old grade three searchers? The yes. kind of us one, put them to soul check top five. Yes. And then when you don't find anything, it just feels like the worst thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, like, they were just not doing anything for the first three turns. They, like, persona ride onto. Dark Thagria, call Blaster Blade onto the field, and then that was their turn to like retire my Travis, and that was just their turn. It was still three attacks, even with the restand. Oh, and, God. Yeah, and then like their final turn, they finally managed to do something with like Thagria. Uh, I think they got this guy up to like 45k and they restood him, but I also hit a defensive OT that turn. I was I was making it through that turn anyways. It wasn't that impactful, but it still was one of those things like, okay, then. <laughs> Makes the game real easy. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, my opponent just, like, never got going. It was really unfortunate. Your opponent 100% dropped after that round. <laughs> <laughs> like, even, even if they're X1, they're just like, no. Well, he, he would have had to get pared down, right, to be X1. Oh, yeah, maybe. Because okay, yeah. Ripper was already at one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, game three, I played against Tamayura. So, pretty, mm-hmm. again, pretty like standard looking list. And uh, I think my opponent just played the matchup really badly, even though like right before this, they were complaining like, oh, this is going to be my third like retire heavy matchup. And it was the second Bob Sagra he had played in the tournament. But for some reason, going second, he called both of his dolls at grade two. Don't. Guys, <laughs> like that, like I saw him do that, and I didn't say anything out loud, but I was just like, "Why?" And <laughs> so, of those course, things like I'm gonna complain about this matchup, and then mm-hmm. like do everything to lose. Yeah, and then you know, of course, I just soul blast two, retire his front row, and I'm just like, I don't know what you were expecting there. <laughs> yeah, I just love the idea of, of like he, he plays the dolls, and then you want to go, really. Yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> I can't criticize him too much because that's how I lost my second game too. That's yeah, your Or my second loss was like a very similar thing where I just had this really bad brain fart moment, but we'll get to that. So yeah, my opponent committed way too early, got their stuff blown up, and then we're stuck calling a single card every turn. Mm-hmm. So that matchup ended very quickly. Uh, okay. Game four was against Laurel Nerol. So. Uh, Pretty standard Loro list. I feel like maybe you could have found a way to shove Melty into I'm, this, but who I'm knows? I'm sorry, did you just say standard Loro list? What does that what does that mean? That I mean you have like all of the orders, you have this girl. That seems all right, like, but that girl eating a eating a burger or whatever. That's true. I feel like that card is sick. I want to yeah. play Max copies this card all the time. <laughs> so yeah, this was the first like competitive back and forth that wasn't either my opponent doing absolutely nothing or both of us doing absolutely nothing. Like this time, like both of our decks actually did what they were supposed to. Uh, we had a pretty good back and forth. Laurel Narrow is still pretty scary just because like you can get the crit really early, and then once you get to the fractal turn, then you just gain a whole bunch of power. So I think like they hit me for like 50k with a Sentinel Restrict. I was at I was low enough damage early on that I just took that one, and then the second time it went up to like 70k with a crit, and I had to drop five triggers from my hand to block this. But <laughs> yes, I did outskill my opponent and just drew, just like drove check a bunch of triggers and had enough cards in my hand to just hard guard Loro without a PG. Nice. Skill game. Yeah. I mean, I think it's fair. My damage zone that game was two Madokas, both Samsaras, and then my fifth damage was finally a trigger. Nice. <laughs> so, I think it's fair that I could, like, drive check all of my triggers for damaging absolutely nothing. And then, uh, the game after that was Zorga, so... I was a little confused about this one because it is actually useless. Wait, so he he runs the Grave Eagle Zorga and yeah, GDR. He, he ru- yeah, he runs Grave Zorga, but he also just has Grief, and it's just discard fodder. That's all I ever saw him using it for, but it's like, I feel like you could have swapped that out with, like, another Miasma or, like, Regurgitation if you're just going to be playing a card that you're never going to use. Because GDR isn't uh, grade four; it's like a different grade three. Yeah, no, it's like it's it has to be mysterious rain yeah. spiritualist. So this card is completely useless in this deck. I have no idea why it was there, but I would love again, for him to the... like hope the opponent doesn't read. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> guess. But that was a that was a moment where I like saw it in the deck list. I'm like, eh. And I was wondering, like, if that was ever going to come up, that I was going to have to call him out on it. But it seemed like he was just using it as this card fodder. Bizarre. Also, I saw every Zorgo list was running this order that, like, when something else attacks, you can have a unit gain 5k. I don't think I've ever seen any of the Zorga players use it on, like, stream games or anything, but they all run it, and I don't know why. I'm guessing I, I, it's... Like you, you put it on the guy who's attacking last. Like your, mm-hmm. uh, you just put on dragon. prison dragon. Yeah, and have that be your. Uh, it it like gets an extra big. 10k, right? That's something. yeah. On top That's of like, like the 10k, ratio, right? Yeah, because you already have like 10k with Miasma plus Zorga's skill. 
But I guess Prison Dragon is actually like pretty small, all things considered. So it doesn't get it's five K. So uh, Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Five mm. K and a crit. But, well, yeah. I would have thought that Zorga could maybe run like regurgitation just because like every other top meta deck has removal, so I feel like that's what Zorga is missing right now, because he's got the big bungus beat down. Prison Dragon can gain the crit, but he has like no form of removal. But I guess regurgitation is just bad because you have to you can only call back something with the exact same grade as what you retired, and it costs a counter blast and a soul blast. Yeah, it's like matchup dependent on whether you're gonna get the things you want. It like mm -hmm. messes with your deck building. It's just not yeah. good for something like that at the moment. So, anyway. so yeah. Uh playing against Zorga. Another like pretty competitive back and forth match. This game went really long. Uh so they got me to four damage early, and they could, like pretty aggressively guarded my early turn. So I was working from behind the whole game. It was like four to two for a really long time, and then the lucky thing is that they only ever milled one prison dragon, so I didn't have to deal with both columns having a crit every turn. So I think that helped alleviate some of the pressure. And then I believe this game was the one where I managed to consistently persona ride every turn. So. Eventually, I managed to wear them out of resources and get all of my attacks through to end the game. But I, there was also a very annoying moment where like, they finally started taking damage, and then I hit them to four, and it's the over-trigger. It was the last attack of that turn, so it wasn't that impactful, but it was still this really annoying moment of like, oh, you still just get like a heal and a draw, and you're at three damage versus my four. When I'm like trying to put pressure on you, that's fun. So it was it was probably the least impactful it could have been in that game state, but it was still just kind of annoying to to see it. It's like one one less thing, or like one mm -hmm. one more thing, one more thing, one more thing on the pile. But it's the best time to get it, aside from like turn one. Yeah, so I eventually managed to grind through that matchup, but that, this one was a pretty close one. Are we and underestimating then... Zorga? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. And then my stream game. Oh, my opponent was a Chad. Yep. Does take <laughs> Chad, huh? Yeah. And we're playing Zeus. Yeah. The record of Ragnarok. Yeah, so this is just one of those like he is playing it for the exact reaction of okay, sorry, what does this deck do? That's that's what's happening for me Fair right enough. now. Yeah. What does this deck do? Uh make really Call cards early and make big bunguses. Yep. Okay. And so this deck, if you can just retire their front row, is actually not too threatening. Which yeah. Bob Saga can do, right? Right. <laughs> so this was my feature game on stream. So this guy was having the time of his life because he got to feature Zeus on stream. Meanwhile, I did not open the spear. I damaged two of the spears from his early rush. And then, luckily... This card, his deck only ever has like five cards in hand. So, on my swing back, which is probably going to be my last turn if I didn't kill him that right then and there, uh, he guarded for one to pass. I think he put down 43, is what he told me. So, it was 43 versus my 38. And you'll see on stream there was a moment like he was about to intercept. And since they don't have our audio from the actual game, what was happening is like, he was thinking about intercepting, trying to do math, and I was like, well, if it's a 5k shield, then that takes you to 48 versus my 38. That's still one to pass. So he was like, all right, screw it, just one to pass then. And then I hit the trigger and I won. So that was just a lucky thing where it's like, healed from lethal and then got a trigger on the swing back. So we're just skilled gaming. It was incredibly skillful. <laughs> this is this is the game that I was kind of like though this so this is the first time I saw your list I think since registration yeah the last time we played you were still running the sword and mm -hmm. so you were still playing uh, the grade three yep and so this was the time I realized that he cut the grade three and then he didn't get the the so, the spear and I was like oh no it's all going downhill <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so you yeah. got to heal to heal the spear mm -hmm. but like you didn't have the grade three so there's no point yeah. Yeah, so that's why in the revision I put Adarla back into the deck because 
also have b actually own bo burning flails. I'm going to order those when I order all of my V stuff. <laughs> but yeah, if yeah. I have burning flail, like there are a couple of different ways to get it back, so you don't necessarily have to call it from hand. You can like guard with it, call it back with Ashnia or Bavsagra skill, and then use it for the soul charge. So I think with the extra soul charge available, I don't need Travis as badly, and I can afford to cut a copy for a Darla. Okay, that makes so, yeah. a lot of sense. So yeah, I put a Darla back to two just because I want to like find it occasionally, and I still don't run the sword. I think like my deck is stuffed really full of cards that I want to see, so like I don't think I can afford to run the sword anyways, and. Like, the use cases for it aren't that high. Like, there are some cases where I will just, like, discard the spear from my hand for, like, the ride line just because it's the best option and then I still have a Darla to work with. So, yeah. Uh, the game against Zeus was where I was like, okay, yeah, I should probably put a Darla back in the deck. <laughs> it was like your, uh, your revelation moment. That yeah. game, I was just like... I think there was a turn I was just like, does, does Reaper just lose here? And then... Almost. Zeus. And then Zeus. Zeus See, just couldn't, couldn't you know, The worst it. thing is, like, when he was rushing me at grade 2, and he had, like, one of the 30k Zeuses, I had a PG in my hand, and my gut instinct was like, this top card is going to be a spear, isn't it? And so I was, like, weighing the decision in my mind, like, do I PG this, but then, like, Zeus is going to get a restand and a crit on his grade 3 turn, or do I... And then I won't have a PG for it, or do I just, like let it go and hope that it isn't the spear and of course it was the spear yep <laughs> tragic I, I really need to start getting like uh, stings for shit like this so yeah that was my feature game on stream skilled uh, gameplay all around and then uh, yeah this round 7 was against Flagberg so this is where I had my complete brain fart moment my opening hand was like two Samsara, two Madokas, and I was going second, so I called them both at my grade 2 turn, when he's already at grade 2, and neither of them would hit. And it was one of those, like, after the turn ended, and I didn't attack with either of my rear guards, I'm like, why the fuck did I do that? Because, of course, the next turn, they just ride up to Flagberg and retire them both, and now I'm just like, you know, I could have had two more rear guards. Yeah, that's rough. So yeah, that happened, and then, you know, from there, Flagberg just grinded me out, because, you know, Inlet Pulse replaces itself, and then they just kept having cards, even though I was retiring their front row. So, you know, they grinded the game out better than me, because I just misplayed early and lost all my rear guards. Mm -hmm. uh, also, never drew Oshnia at any point in the game, which could have helped against this matchup, because I could have called something back. So, like, yeah. happens. So I just played this one badly and lost. I also maybe could have guarded their like triple door differently. So the first Persona ride, they didn't have the resources to go all in, so they only made four attacks. But you know, the turn after that, they went for the finisher, and I think maybe I should have let some of the rear guards through and like thrown down three cards against Flagberg because. I decided the thing to do was guard all the rear guards and just take Flagberg and hope that he didn't crit me, which of course he did. Mm -hmm. So Average. yeah, that happened. And then my final game was against Nirvana. <clears throat> I wasn't particularly worried about this matchup just because I knew, okay, just retiring their front row every turn is probably enough. Also, I think my opponent didn't play the matchup very well because turn two, they overdress into Urger. But like later on, I saw them discard an arcs, which means they had arcs in their opening hand and didn't use it. And they didn't like top deck it that turn and then just ditch it. I I mean I maybe I don't know, but all I know is like the they like overdressed into an Urger. Of course, I retired it, and then like next turn for their ride up, they like discard an arcs, and I'm like, okay, I arcs hope you the like. Only play. Yeah. I have to assume that they just drew the arcs, otherwise, why on earth would you ever overdress Urger instead? Maybe Reed. they just really wanted to get the extra swing in or something. I don't know. No, it wasn't even the extra swing. They just, like, called it at grade oh, two. They just straight, like, overdress, main fate, like, wow. Yeah. Okay. 
That's like they didn't even say they didn't even like save it for the grade three turn for the extra attack. They just called it, and I'm like, for what? Wait, the shield? What's the? I don't get it. Yeah, against Bob Sagro, which just retires the front row, and they were going second, so they knew that was going to happen. Or at least they could have read. They could have. I mean, they had your deck list open. I assume so they could have yeah. just looked at it. And be like, what does this card do again? Oh yeah, yeah. But maybe, maybe so like that happened, and then sure. like they never drew a second trick star either. So when they got to the grade four turn, <sighs> they made like Esper Arida, and then they like attacked with it, and they had like a vanilla Urger that was only twenty k from Nirvana, and it like didn't do anything. Dude. And then on the crackback, I had uh, over trigger. Crit trigger, restand, crit trigger, draw trigger. They were very dead. I mean, I guess they kind of deserved it if they're playing <laughs> like that. No. Um, I also yeah. noticed that they're not using trick star as their starter and just have mm. the foreign deck. I don't think people use trick star as starter. No, anymore. nobody uses trick star. I think this one, no, this one just has to be written up. But like, I don't think you have a lot of easy ways to get the trick star out of your soul, is the thing. I Because you'd have to like, Virena Soul Blast 2 to retire something. Doesn't the Red Line Soul Blast? Uh, does, oh, yeah, I guess this one does. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess you could, but then you're like giving up the draw if yeah. you're going second. It's a, it's a decision to make. I'm guessing the card advantage is just that important, probably. I think so. The real important thing is, is drawing arcs, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Without arcs, you're. Struggling. Also, like, he's not. He's also, like, not play. He's playing maxed out copies of the grade one, which I don't see a lot of other lists doing. He like doesn't have Expecta as a way to like rank up arcs and get like crit pressure in. Hmm. I don't know. I don't really like this deck list very much. Like I don't I don't want to like talk shit about all of my opponents too much, but I feel like this is not that great. I mean, if he wasn't you you were X2 at this point, mm -hmm. which means he was a uh, probably he, I think we were both like X2. So okay, like he so. was clearly doing fine in the tournament. I'm just like, yeah. hmm, I don't know. I disagree with some of the decisions on this list. My guess and th this is probably like wrong, but maybe he was tired. What time was it at this point? It was like well, 4:30 here. It's probably like later. Do you yeah, know also we don't from? know where this person's from, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think he was like six over there, but you know. Okay, so he's probably in like the Midwest or something. Mm -hmm. um, so okay, so that's that's probably different. But like, it's just, it, these tournaments do take a mental toll on people. Yeah, um, you've been out for like seven hours at this point. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you're bound to make mistakes, uh, which is also why that outer orange thread that re we retweeted is so important mm -hmm. for stuff like just take care of yourself, man. Drink water. Yeah, eat eat a lunch, shit like that. So yeah, I do think there were like a few a few opponents who just played the matchup badly. I played the matchup badly against Flagberg. <laughs> so, you know, it happened. And then, yeah, my final record in the whole thing was 6-2 with Bob Sagra. So I think Bob Sagra is, like, decent. I don't think it's, like, one of the strongest decks in the format. Like, it definitely has a problem of, like, digging for cards. Mm -hmm. There are a lot... Like, in the Flagberg matchup, I really wanted to see a copy of Ashnia to, like, rebuild my board, but I just never found it. You know, obviously against Zeus and Prison, I wanted more spears and couldn't dig for it because spear is the only thing in the deck that draws a card. So yeah, like right now, I'm looking for ways to like dig into the deck more with Bob Sagra. We are getting that promo grave one that searches for Trick Moons, so that helps like thin out the deck and shuffle things. That's good. And honestly, with like how much removal is in the meta, because like Bruce has Derek, uh. Gravidia, obviously. Nirvana can use Virena skill if you really, really need to. Thagria could use her own skill if you really, really need to, although I don't think you want to. Uh, the dolls, uh, one of the dolls can put things into soul. Yep. You know, Flagberg can passively retire too. So uh, that grade two that's coming out in set six, where like when something is called from the drop zone, you can counterblast one, call it. Uh, I think you maybe just tech a copy into the deck as just like a way to build board against removal matchups, which is basically everything in this meta. Because like I would have appreciated that against Flagberg, and I feel like since the meta probably isn't changing too significantly, and everything that's halfway relevant has some form of removal, 
like one copy as just like okay every now and then it'll come along for the ride and at least you have a body is like good enough I did that with I, I had one copy of a coffin shooter in mm -hmm. in my build for that same reason because it's like You'll you'll inevitably get an order and drop either by milling or just mm -hmm. freaking. Yeah, the only thing about that gray too is it it has to be in the drop zone somehow, so you have to like find it, which yeah. goes back to the base problem of Bob Sagro just needs ways to find cards. Yeah. So yeah, that was my final record for Bro. I'm pretty happy with my results. We're proud like, of you. For... Be proud of him. Yeah, honestly, for I'm a proud. show where we constantly talk shit about ourselves. And especially because I don't think I'm the best player ever. That was like a pretty dang good record. And like I maybe could have gone seven and one if I played the Flagberg matchup a bit better. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. I, I think twentieth yeah. out of what was it, five hundred and twelve people is very uh, impressive. Uh it was like two fifty three. If it was five hundred and twelve, we could have had like top sixteen and I might have still had a chance. No. <laughs> Wait. Why why did I think five hundred and twelve was That's uh... the maximum. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is like what three hundred? No, it was less than three hundred, oh, right? Three yeah. three sixty seven registered. That was the, yeah, yeah, but okay. only two hundred and fifty three checked in, which is why we didn't have, which is why we were only rounds. top eight instead of top or, sixteen. I nine, nine rounds is like such a struggle, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. still pr very impressive. Um, so yeah, that's that. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, is there anything we like? Anything else you wanted to? Uh, say that you learned or just from bro season overall because we've now covered three of these so eh, just like learning to play matchups a little better like standard is the format where like because it's slower small mistakes get punished really hard mm -hmm. and so you need to be able to like read your opponent need to like pay attention like read what your opponent's doing like for the more intense matchups like for in my case, like Flagberg, Zorga, Loro, like those are ones where I had I probably should have paid more attention to what my opponent was doing. I do feel like some some of them I like zoned out. Uh, the Zorga matchup, I did take like one of the Prison Dragon crits early to like save a PG for later, which I think paid off. Okay. So the Zorga matchup specifically was one where I like paid attention to everything, and I think I played that one well, but. The other ones, like, I feel like I kind of zoned out a bit. Flagberg especially, but I closed the Loro list. But Loro, I wasn't, like, super duper looking at what they were doing. I just kind of assumed that they were going to activate Fractal and make Loro really big. Did they do that? Yes, they did. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, Standard is just the format where, like, you have to pay attention to, like, the smaller details and know, like, when to commit your resources. Because that also came up on stream a lot, where like the person who managed their resources better tended to win. Yeah, and I made the mistake of thinking that things that give you resources can make mm -hmm. up for reckless resource spending, and they don't. They just deck you out. <laughs> so <Yep. laughs> um, that's a thing yeah. I learned from that's this. The old, this is like Boomer Vanguard strats right here. Yeah, back yes, out. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm just so used to like being neck neck deep in premium where you're just like getting cards like it's going out of style, mm -hmm. and um, with grade four Magnolia, I was spoiled in that you didn't have to even spend resources in the first place. Mm -hmm. just make a board and go to town, and you're, that's it. But then yeah. it forced me to think differently, and the thinking differently was the wrong kind of thinking. <laughs> so, yeah. My uh I don't know if I'm going to keep running Bob Sager for BCS season, because, like, she doesn't get that much in the upcoming sets, although I don't know what I would run in her place either. If we get the promo order, I might actually cope on Eva just for shits and giggles. Go for it, man. Um, uh, but otherwise, like, unless set 7 is just absolutely ridiculous for Bob Sager, I'm thinking of, like, maybe playing something else. I just don't know what. Probably something uh, lyrical-related? Uh... Mm, I don't know. Like one of like one of the reasons I opted not to play Kyrie was just part of it was superstition. Like there was that creator tournament where you dropped Magnolia for Bruce and you got absolutely destroyed. So there was like <laughs> yeah. super there was like that superstition, but also like I hadn't tested with the list yet and I wasn't sure like what variant was going to work out. 
I feel like the friend heavy variant might be better for the current meta because there's so much removal. Like, you also get to play Melty to full value. Mm -hmm. So that was one where I was like, maybe, like, that was the variant I was like trying to p build, but I also didn't really test it very much. And I think Bob Sagro was an easier deck to pilot, so that's why I went for it instead. But yeah, I don't really know, like, what what I'm doing next. Like, maybe some of the lyrical stuff, like, the but the bunny girl that's basically Spike Brothers, like, looks pretty interesting. <coughs> and then, like, as far as all the new stuff, like, I don't think any of them are that strong. I don't think any of them are particularly weak, but, like, I don't know that any of... I feel like most of them are around the same level as Bob Sagra at best, so, like... I, I feel like know. I read one of the ride lines and thought it was pretty insane, but I couldn't tell mm -hmm. you which one it was at this point. I'll read yeah. it again and revisit. But it wasn't the bunny one. I think the bunny one is just whatever. Yeah. Uh, well, there have only been two revealed so far, so the other oh, so one... It must also... be the, the magazine one. Yeah, the magazine one also looks very strong, although I think Soul is a problem because everything costs Soul Blast. I think that one looks kind of nuts. Mm -hmm. But so, I yeah, think that's the bunny one, one is pretty mid, because, yeah, the grade two only, like... I don't know, what does it look at? Top seven for one card of, like, lo lower power? Mm -hmm. than, like, lower than standard power? It's like, yeah. I'm I don't know. Not a fan of that. I don't mind it. But, yeah. That's kind of, like, where I'm at with standard right now. It's like, I like Bob Sagra. Like, I'm going to stick with it. If something really crazy comes out for it in set seven, I'm going to, like, desperately hope I get sneak peeks or find something like that Friday. But... Otherwise, like, I might look to be doing something else just because, like, upcoming sets not really getting anything. I wonder if we could, I wonder if uh, 50 cards.shop would uh, oh. ship the things like the day of. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think so. If they have the infrastructure to, to do that, like, the week before, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you can, there's a promo code for that in the description <laughs> slash show notes. Yeah. Also, I like, I, like, didn't order any of the bundles for set 6 on 50 cards, because I still don't know what I want from set 6. Like, I'm probably just going to play the Nirvana stuff, because I already have a Nirvana deck, even though this is basically brand new. Yeah. Like, I'm vaguely interested in Youth Burke, but it's kind of looking on a similar level to Dragonic Overlord at the moment, which is not that great. And then... Eh. So, yeah. That's that. So, yeah. I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed that season. What did you play? How did you do? Uh, at Nexus at Night on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, if you want to help support the show, patreon.com slash Nexus at Night. Five bucks a month, you get a whole ass bonus show every week with uh, the three of us and sometimes a guest. Um, thanks to $10 patrons, Darren, Cole, Josh, and Jeremy. Uh, play mats, merch, all that's in the description slash show notes. Where can they find the rest of us? Oh, you can find me on Twitter at Wiggums, two G's, two Z's. You can find me at Plasma Eclipse. And find me at Atlas Novak on Twitter, Instagram, or follow my other show at Generation Dan on Twitter, or Generation underscore Dan on Instagram. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next time. And until then, I was Atlas. I'm Matt. I'm Root Beer. And have a good night, everyone.